in order to displace a that test charge to a small displacement dr uh, will be given uh, by the general formula dw will be numerically equal to fs cos theta so now uh, but you already know uh, here now you already know now here now what will be the displacement of the test charge so the displacement of the test charge will be dr and moreover now what is the value of theta so you already know if you look at the diagram the force vector and the displacement vector now force vector and the displacement vector now both of them will be acting in the opposite direction that's the reason why the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector will be 180 degree so remember by looking at the diagram it is very clear now the force will be outward but the displacement will be inward so meaning what the force the force vector and the displacement vector now both of them are will be acting in the opposite direction that's the reason why the angle between them will be 180 degree so in the above formula so here this will be equal to so s will be equal to dr and theta will be equal to 180 degree so therefore now what will happen the small amount of work that will be done will be given by the formula so dw will be numerically equal to f dr now multiplied by cos 180 But you already know the cos 180 degree will be equal to minus one. Now you already know the cos 180 will be minus one. So therefore, the small amount of work done will be numerically equal to F D R. Now multiply by the cos 80. Minus one. That's the reason why the small amount of work done will be numerically equal to minus F D R. So let us call it. Now this will be the equation one. So remember the small amount of work that should be done in order to displace the test charge. dr uh, will be given uh, by the formula so dw will be numerically equal to minus f dr so now therefore now can anybody not tell me now what will be the total work that should be done or what should be the total work that should be done in order to displace the test charge from point b to point a or what will be the total work that should be done on the test charge to displace from point b to point a so now very simple Now what we can do? Now total work. So I can say now total work done. So total work done to displace. So total work done to displace the test charge. 
the total work done to displace the test charge so total work done to displace the test charge from point a from point a to point b so from point a to point b so the total work the total work done to displace that test charge from point a or rather from point b to point a from point b to point a will be given by me so now so now i can write down now what will be the total work that should be done in order to displace that test charge from point b to point a power be given by a is it will be given by now remember the total work done so once again now remember the concept the total work that should be done in order to displace the test charge from point b to point a will be given by now the blue will be numerically equal to Now integral of B W. So total amount of work that should be done in order to displace that test charge from point B to point A will be numerically equal to now integral of B W. Is the integral of B W? Now substitute the value of d w from equation one. So therefore, so I can say the total amount of work, the total amount of work that will be done will be numerically equal to the integral of d w. Now d w will be given by now minus f into d r. So therefore, uh, so this can be a uh, further written. So therefore, the total amount of work will be numerically equal to not in it a uh, minus outside. Now we get the integral of f d r. So therefore, the total amount of work that should be done in order to displace. That test charge from point B to point A will be given by not get two will be numerically equal to not minus of not integral F D R. So now let's call the equation number two. So now I can remove this part. Now let us see. Now how to uh, simplify for the help? Or how to uh, uh, simplify for the help? So now uh, you already know. Now what will be the formula? Or what will be the formula for the electrostatic force? Now between the point charge. Test charge at any or distance small r. So now, uh, what I am going to do now in this formula, I am going to substitute. Now, what will be the repulsive force now between the point charge and the test charge at any separation small r? Now remember one thing: now the test charge will be approaching towards the point charge, or the test charge will be approaching towards the point charge. So now I can substitute. Now what will be 
see the repulsive force draw between the point charge and the test charge at any or distance small r. So now I can say. So now I can say from the Coulomb's inverse square law. So now I can say from the Coulomb's inverse square law. Now the repulsive force draw between the point charge and the test charge. So now I can write down now the repulsive force between the point charge and the test charge at any subtraction small r can be written by now f will be numerically equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught now q q naught now divided by r square so let's call it now equation number 3 now we got the repulsive force between the two charges so we already know the repulsive force between the two charges at any suppression R will be given by now capital F will be numerically equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q naught dot divided by R square so now uh, what do you do now substitute now equation 3 in equation 2 so wherever we got the repulsive force now that can be replaced by this formula so therefore now I can say now substitute now equation 3 in equation so, so therefore, the total amount of work that will be done will be given by now minus of now f will be given by now 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught so multiplied by q q naught divided by r square now multiplied by dr. So very simple. Now what I am doing, I am replacing uh, the formula for the repulsive force. So the total amount of work that should be done in order to displace the test charge from point B to point A will be given by the minus of the integral. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q naught not divided by r square. So now uh, what do you do? Now whatever the constants are there or whatever the constants will be there, now you take outside and keep the variable now inside the integral so you already know so by doing the integration now the constants will be taken out and the integral will always be done for the variable so so therefore now what I will do if I take the constants outside so what are the constants required so q q naught now divided by 4 pi epsilon naught will be constant so i can take outside so w will be numerically equal to minus q q naught now divided by 4 pi epsilon naught will be outside so we get the integral of t r now divided by r square now one more uh, important thing so now uh, one more uh, important thing you need to remember so now uh, can anybody not tell me now what will be the limits of integration can anybody 
not only mean now what will be the limits of integration now meaning now what will be the lower limit and what will be the upper limit so very simple now what we are doing we are displacing the charged particle from point b to point a that is the reason why the lower limit will be r b and the upper limit will be r a so remember the important concept we are displacing the test charge from point b to point a that is the reason why the lower limit will be r b and the upper limit will be r a now substitute the limits of integration so the lower limit will be r b and the upper limit will be r a so uh, we want the lower limit or will be r b and the upper limit will be r a so now uh, let us see now further now what we can do so now uh, you can or uh, you can diagram so now i give you one or you can diagram so now uh, let us see now what or we can further do so therefore the total amount of work that will be done will be numerically equal to minus q q not not divided by 4 pi epsilon not not integral now what you do now bring the denominator to the numerator or bring the denominator to the numerator so what do you get now r power minus 2 into dr so lower limit will be r b and the upper limit will be r a so now anybody not tell me now what will be the integral of r power minus 2 dr so you remember the general formula for the integral or you remember the master formula for the integral now remember this general formula or the master formula but you know now integral of x power n ds will be numerically equal to now x power n plus 1 now divided by n plus 1 so now you already know the general formula now integral of x power n ds will be numerically equal to now x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 that is the reason why now what will be integral of r power minus 2 so therefore the total amount of work that will be done will be numerically equal to minus q q not not divided by 4 pi epsilon not so multiply by now what will be the integral of r power minus 2 dr so according to this formula it will be r power minus 2 plus 1 now divided by minus 2 plus 1 and the limits of integration from r b to r a so therefore now finally now what will be left over so if i remove the left part now let us see now what we are getting the final formula for the total work done so the total amount of work done of uh, the numerical equal to minus q q not not divided by 4 pi epsilon not now multiply by now r power minus 2 plus 1 will be r power minus 1 not divided 
divided by minus 1 conjugates will be from Rb to Ra. Now what I will do? I will take this minus sign outside. So minus of minus will become plus. So what I am doing in the denominator not take the minus sign outside. So minus of minus will become plus. So therefore the total work done will be numerically equal to Q Q naught divided by 4 pi epsilon naught the multiplied by the what we get R power minus 1. So R power minus 1 from the lower limit Rb to the upper limit Ra. Now what I will do? Now R power minus 1 can be brought to the numerator. So what I will do? I will take R power minus 1 in the denominator. So therefore the work done will be numerically equal to Q Q naught now divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. Now what do you get? Now 1 by R from Rb to Ra. So now uh, what will be our final job? So now uh, substitute the limits of integration. Now substitute the limits of integration in place of R. Now substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit. So now uh, what we are doing in the place of R. Now substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit. Now let us see now what uh, we are going to get. So now uh, let us see now what uh, we are going to get by substituting the limits of integration. So therefore now I can write down now the amount of work done will be numerically equal to Q Q naught now divided by 4 pi epsilon naught now multiplied by now the upper limit will be 1 by R A minus the lower limit will be 1 by R B. So remember that now this will be or the formula we got or this will be the general formula we got or this will be the master formula we got for the total amount of work that shall be done in order to displace the test charge from point B to point A. So remember we obtain the formula for the total amount of work done. So the total amount of work that should be done in order to displace the test charge from point B to point A will be given by dot L will be numerically equal to Q Q naught divided by 4 pi epsilon naught now multiplied by 1 by R A minus 1 by R B. So now uh, let us call it. Now this will be now equation number 3. So now uh, let us call it now this one as equation number 3. This okay. huh. So uh, that is uh, the work done we got. So now I want to obtain now what will be the potential difference now between the point A and point B. 
so you already know the potential difference between point A and point B will be given by the formula by uh, the potential difference by the potential difference between but the potential difference between points A and B but the potential difference between points A and B now you remember now the potential difference between point A and point B will be given by the formula now V A minus V B will be numerically equal to now get blue divided by Q naught so if you remember the definition of the potential difference it will always be defined the amount of work that should be done in order to displace the test charge from one point to another point not divided by the magnitude of the test charge is what we call the potential difference. So therefore the potential difference uh, between uh, points A and B is it will be given by now V A minus V B will be equal to F divided by Q naught. So what do you do? Now substitute the formula for the work done or substitute the formula for the total work done. So what do you get? So V A minus V B will be numerically equal to Q Q naught not divided by 4 pi epsilon naught now multiplied by 1 by Ra minus 1 by Rb now whole are divided by Q naught so what will happen now Q naught and Q naught are will be getting cancelled so therefore now what will be remaining so Q naught and Q naught are will be getting cancelled now what will be remaining so therefore now V A minus V B will be numerically equal to now what I am going to get so I will get now Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught now multiplied by now 1 by R A minus 1 by R B. So let's call it. Now this will be our equation 4. So now uh, let us call it. Now this will be our equation number 4. So the potential difference now between the point A and point B will be given uh, by the formula now Q uh, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught now multiplied by 1 by R A minus 1 by R B so let us call now equation number 4 so now uh, you remember now what is our intention now remember I want to obtain the formula for the electric potential now remember I want to obtain the formula for the electric potential and you remember for the electric potential now what is the concept now one point will be taken inside the electric field and the other point will be taken outside the electric field so you remember the 
concept for the electric potential so one point will be taken inside the electric field and the other point will be taken outside the electric field and you also know not any point that will be lying outside the electric field will be considered to be at infinity and the potential at that point will always be zero so you already know not any point that will be located outside the electric field will be considered to be at infinity and the potential at that point will be and the potential at that point will be equal to zero now let's apply the concept for the electric potential so now i can say if i draw the diagram now again i am drawing the diagram so what i am doing now what i am doing i am taking point a inside the electric field and i am taking the point b outside the electric field so remember here in order to obtain the electric potential at point a now what i am doing i am taking the point a inside the electric field and the point b outside the electric field and you already know not any point that will be located outside the electric field will be considered to be at infinity that's the reason why the potential of the point b will be equal to zero so now this will be at infinity so this point will be this point will be at infinity that's the reason why the potential of the point b will be zero so now i can write if point b so i can write if point b lies outside the electric field if point b lies outside if the point b lies outside the electric field if the point b lies outside the electric field then what are the conditions required so then are you remember now what are the conditions required so remember now if the point b or lies outside the electric field now then now what i can write now then now the potential of the point b will be equal to zero and moreover now r b will be tending to infinity so very simple when the point b will be lying outside the electric field so the point b will be considered to be at infinity so the potential of the point b will be taken as zero and the distance r b will be tending to infinity now substitute now both the conditions in this formula so therefore now what i can write now v in minus 0 will be numerically equal to now q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught now multiply by 1 by r in minus 1 by infinity and you already know 1 by infinity will be 0 
so 1 by infinity will be equal to 0. So directly we are getting the electric potential at point A will be numerically equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught now multiplied by 1 by R A or I can write if I rearrange the formula so therefore now V A will be numerically equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught so I can write now Q divided by R A so remember now this will be the formula we got for the electric potential at the point A or this will be the formula we got for the electric potential at point A that will be lying inside the electric field. So now uh, what I will do, I will draw the surface or now I will be dropping the surface. Now as a result we will be getting the general formula for the electric potential for any point that will be lying inside the electric field. So what I will do, I will draw the surface then after dropping the surface I will be getting the general formula for the electric potential for any point that will be lying inside the electric field. So therefore if I have this one, so if I have uh, this one also, so now I can generalize the formula, so I can generalize the formula, so I can write in general, in general the electric potential at any point inside the electric field due to the point charge will be given by the formula 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught now Q divided by R. So remember now this will be the general formula we got or this will be the general formula we got for the electric potential of any point that will be lying inside the electric field of the point charge. So hope uh, students you have all understood a very 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 important relation. Go through once again and I want as many uh, as many comments in the comment box. Now that will be a kind of boosting for us. That will be a kind of motivation.